Climate change is a war of the rich against the poor. Climate change is a war of the rich against the poor. Climate change is a war. Dominic Cummings confirmed what we already knew. The government has blood on its hands. We also know that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. But people are fighting back. In this programme we cover the strike at Liverpool University where the UCU is fighting job cuts. We ask, is the air we breathe killing us? Two years ago, Liverpool City Council set up a company called Foundation Homes and told us that they were on track to build and deliver 200 new homes by 2020 and by 2021 they expected to be delivering 1,000 new homes every year. But where are they? MPA TV investigates. The Tories have scrapped the ban on evictions, putting more than a million households at risk of homelessness. Housing union Acorn is organising the fight back. Their membership on Merseyside has expanded in recent years. Here they are in action before the pandemic. Basically, we're trying to obstruct an eviction. It is technically legal but highly immoral of a lady that's battling stomach cancer in order for the private landlord's Mistoria to profit from making her home into student accommodation. I mean, it's happening a lot all over the country. It's shady property developers that are buying up houses with people already living in them, trying to make luxury student accommodation and reap the rewards. But it's effectively just kicking working class people out of their communities, further and further outside of the city, making it untenable for them to stay. And it's not fair, it's shameful. People deserve to live in a safe, secure home in an area of their choosing. And we're fighting for that across the country. Well luckily today we've heard that we've got a 42 day stay, so that's a small victory but it is going to happen so we need to be ready for it, we need to mobilise. They're effectively going to kick her out on the streets and we're here to say that homes are for people, not for profit, you know. In early 2018, Liverpool Council announced the launch of a flagship new housing company called Foundation Homes. It was marketed as a new ethical approach to addressing the housing crisis. In a corporate video, former Labour councillor Frank Hunt, CEO Mark Kitts and former Mayor Joe Anderson outlined how it would all work. Liverpool Foundation Homes Limited is the Liverpool City Council's only owned company. It's a housing company that's been established to address specific issues in the city's housing market. It aims to deliver 10,000 new homes all across Liverpool over the next 10 years. Now that wouldn't be build 10,000 homes, that would be add 10,000 homes either by new build or renovation and refurbishment of existing properties. So we'll be saying to people you could sign up to a house you don't need any deposit, but over five years we can top slice some of your rent. That goes into an endowment fund and then in five years you'll have your deposit for a house. Well, a lot of people were excited about it, but two years on, Foundations has only built 18 homes, none of them at an affordable social rent. We invited former Labour councillor Frank Hunt 
who was the non-executive chair of foundations and paid £15,200 a year, to come on the programme, but he did not respond. Mark Kitts, the council's assistant director for regeneration, was appointed as chief executive, while company records show that his boss, Nick Kavanagh, was also a director of the company for a short period. Mr Kavanagh was arrested in 2019 as part of a police probe into building and development contracts in Liverpool and has since been dismissed from his post. Mark Kitts was paid between £100 and £110,000 a year as Chief Executive of Foundations. Liverpool City Council is supposed to be an equal opportunities employer, but none of the posts were advertised. Financial statements show a loss of £700,000 on a turnover of £300,000 in foundations for the first year of trading. It's possible that the cost for the council in the long term for this adventure will be much higher. It's very hard to understand why the council ever thought it a good idea to use public money to set up a company to intervene in the housing market in the first place. Foundations always operated on a housing profit, not a housing needs basis. One thing we can be sure of is that the money lost so far could have been used to keep all of the council's one-stop shops open. According to Liverpool Council Cabinet member Jane Corbett, the closure of six one-stop shops is really great news for our residents. We invited Jane Corbett to come on the programme, but she didn't reply. You know, there's a, a wanton disregard of the needs of elderly people in this council. And there's an assumption that everybody's got this nice house and they've got a spare room to use like an office where they can get online and they know what to do online and they've got a really up-to-date smartphone and they don't realise the realities that actually a lot of pensioners are quite poor. Our pension is the lowest in the OECD countries now. It used to be fourth from the bottom. We are now the bottom in terms of pension. There's a huge section of pensions who are poor there's a huge section of pensioners leaving in poor accommodation. Pensioners have to deal with deaths, deaths in their family, deaths of their partners, all that sort of thing. And they're all expected to deal with this online. And it's just not possible. Now, if you're disabled, what are you going to do to find out about your rights? Because again, what they don't recognise is disabled people are disproportionately poor people as well. And I think you can... Judge a society, judge a government on how well it treats the poorest people in our society. The MPA has a long-standing association with the UCU in Liverpool. Our members have been out supporting their fight to protect jobs at Liverpool University. The university management are attacking jobs and threatening livelihoods in the midst of the pandemic. The branch president, Anthony O'Hanlon, says there is no economic or moral justification for these redundancies. To prevent a campaign of sustained industrial action, all the university has to do is withdraw them. We begin our report with Anthony speaking at a recent UCU rally. We have the biggest ever trade union turnout in this branch to take strike action. We have massive student support. These picket lines have been strong and they'll continue. I think we need to be mindful of that every time we remember Louise Kenny, Janet Beer, that cabal of absolute managers drunk on power. They don't understand collective solidarity. They don't understand the weapons that we have. And it's about time they got that education because they're beginning to learn 
but because of their egos and because of their drunkenness on power, they learn very slowly. So be prepared to do whatever it takes. As Dave said, we'll be out every step of the way for those 32 jobs. Everyone here has heard about one or two individual circumstances. We're at pains to say constantly there are 32 still people left who are brilliant teachers, brilliant researchers, and not one of them will be leaving based on absolute bullshit. It's great in Merseyside to have such a bunch of radical, committed uh, people like the MPA who are always here, who are always showing solidarity and always strengthening in us with the numbers and always sending speakers. It's fantastic to have the pensioners of Merseyside behind us, really important. But this particular strike is even closer to our hearts because they're sacking people from health sciences and at a time when we need massive investment in research, we need massive funding for the NHS and we're in the middle of a pandemic that's killed 130,000 people. It's utter madness to, to be sacking people who are contributing to combating COVID, looking at health and taking science in health uh, forward. So absolutely we're 100% behind them. Next up we've got um, speakers from the Merseyside Pensioners Association, an association extremely close to my heart again. You know, the fantastic, the most radical pensioners you could ever find are the Mersey Pensioners Association here in Liverpool. So we've got Mary Harrison making her way to the stage, but yet they're always with us, stalwarts on our picket lines. We couldn't do it without them. Thanks so much. Now, we know that this dispute it's not just about jobs, it's not just about the possibility of redundancies or the threatened redundancies, it is about education. Because once you start attacking the staff in a university or in a college, you're actually attacking the education and the quality of education that students are getting. And that's what you're fighting to defend. So you're here to support the students and to fight for education for our students in the future. I can't say how important strike action is because it is the one weapon that we as workers have that they are right to actually withdraw our labour when we believe that we have been pushed to the limits where we cannot make any further concessions to employers and this strike is extremely important and I congratulate Liverpool UCU because you are definitely team leaders right there out in the front when it comes to taking action. You are not frightened to stand up and take the employers on. And you are an example to other universities and colleges throughout the country. We congratulate you on this strike. We will congratulate you and celebrate with you when you actually win. Solidarity. Next up, we're going to invite Audrey White, who's um, from the Merseyside Stop the War campaign. But Audrey was instrumental in um, creating legislation against sexual harassment as well in, in like, this country. And that's, there's far too much of that in our universities. So really, really pleased to introduce Audrey White. Everything we've ever won, nothing's ever been given to us. And I think a lot of young people don't realise that every single health and safety issue, every single pay rise, people have fought and lost. But then eventually they've won. So there's no magic answer, except if you don't fight, you'll never win. Every penny in the public purse, every penny that we own, that we pay in taxes, is being looted by this government and the establishment in this country. These people want to make us pay. And I am so pleased to give you solidarity from all of us in the Merseyside Pensioners Association and from the Stop the War organisations because all of our battles are joined together now. And we in Liverpool are always one of the strongest bastions in the fight back for justice. And I am so pleased to see so many of you here today and that you're determined to take on and fight the attacks on our education system. And I send all of your solidarity. It's, you guys are our teachers, not the senior management. You guys are the ones who we speak to on a daily basis. You are the ones who have checked up on us throughout this pandemic, who have transitioned to online learning so brilliantly. 
that we couldn't ask for better staff, we couldn't ask for better teachers. The teachers here have, have changed my life, they've changed what I can do. I never thought I'd be able to stand here and even talk in front of all of these people ever. So, And it's because of everyone that I'm surrounded by and it's because of all of my lecturers. You've had such a huge impact on me personally and I just want to let you know that it's so, so appreciated and we stand with you and we stand against this because it's absolutely ridiculous. As students, we are with you every step of the way and we will continue to fight this with you side by side for as long as it takes because this is unfair and this is not right. We need you now more than ever in a pandemic. We need our teachers, so thank you very much. Dave, what's happened since that rally? So since the rally, we're down to 24 redundancies. So that's a real measure of how industrial action works and how the work that UCU has been doing works and how the solidarity with the students has worked because the students have since also realised that the university has said it will not necessarily mark their work. It will push through uh, progression and degree results without using external examination perhaps, and it, and it will dispense with all of the normal things that guarantee fairness within the system. In response to our marking and assessment boycott, the university decided to dock our wages by 100%, which is tantamount, as our General Secretary says, tantamount to a lockout. So it's an extreme response by an employer that's clearly panicking. If this is unprecedented, it's not happened before this 100% deduction for partial performance of, of, of contract. So it's a measure that our industrial action is working, it's escalating, um, and we need to see you know, what happens. It's a question of who blinks first, and we're determined that it's not going to be us, um, and we're determined to keep going until every single job is safe. Antarctica is headed for a climate tipping point by 2060, with catastrophic melting if carbon emissions aren't cut quickly. The idea that some kind of new technology in the future will save the planet from the impact of climate change is a pipe dream. The MPA has been active in campaigning to protect our environment for future generations. Environmental campaigner and MPA member Dave Toller is particularly concerned about the pollution each of us inhales every day. Air pollution is a killer. A recent report from King's College London tells us that up to 40,000 people a year die in the UK from air pollution related illnesses and up to 1,000 in Liverpool every year. But primary school children born in Liverpool could have reduced life expectancy of up to five months. The World Health Organization designates nitrogen dioxide and particulate matter, fine particulate matter, PM2.5, as two of the most dangerous pollutants. In towns and cities, these are generally produced by transport on the roads, especially diesel vehicles. The report also found evidence of major inequalities related to air pollution in Liverpool. The greatest impacts are faced by the poorest households and they live in areas with the greatest concentrations. Interestingly, car ownership is low amongst those groups. So, as usual, the ones who are being most affected aren't the ones who are causing the problem. Looking a little further afield than Liverpool, I think we should all remember the name Ella Kissy Debra, a nine-year-old girl who tragically died in London in February 2013. A coroner made legal history last year by ruling that air pollution was a cause of her death. He said she was exposed to nitrogen dioxide and particulate matter in excess of World Health Organization guidelines. The coroner said the failure to reduce 
pollution levels to legal limits possibly contributed to her death, as did the failure to provide her mother with information about the potential for air pollution to exacerbate her asthma. Climate change is a war of the rich against the poor. Climate change is a war of the rich against the poor. Climate change is a war of the rich against the poor. Climate change is a war of the rich against the poor. Climate change is a war of the rich against the poor. Of the rich against the poor. So the health of the children and everyone is going to be worse. It's going to take up the green space, which is part of our environment. It's only bad. It's literally only bad. And it's all for greed and for capitalist greed. It's for the airport to make more money. It's not for the good of the people who speak all Liverpool. It's for very rich people to make more money. My good friend Jerry the Plumber has again been out fixing the plumbing of the great and the good. Recently he was troubleshooting at the home of Home Secretary Pretty Patel and he's been kind enough to send us this report. Yeah, working tirelessly, incredibly hard during these challenging times Phil. Yeah, hadn't even had a chance to read about the wedding of the year when the phone goes. Jerry the plumber, I, I, I say. Voice on the end of the line says, I'm pretty. I said, well, I, I've, I've turned a few heads in my time myself, lady. She said, you grubby little man, don't be small talk with me. She said, you may come highly recommended from Boris, Matt, Reese Mogg, Michael Gove, Richie, and Honest Bob. But don't you small talk with me, young man. Yes. You are going to come round to my house. Yes, you sort my water problems out. Uh, I'll be the judge of your work, she said. You're immediately to come round to Witham in Essex, she said. Anyway, off I go. Arrive, knock on the front door. She opens it. She looked absolutely aghast. She said, you horrible, insolent little man. Don't you come to my front door. What will the neighbours think? Get round the back door. I said, OK, madam. She said, and you ought to address me as Home Secretary. Oh, so, round the back door I went. She opens it. She said, right. She said, up to the loft you go, she said. Try and sort out these water leaks. Well, off I go, don't I? As I'm about to go up the stairs, she only just trips me up, didn't she? Smack me head right on the banisters, I do. Hence the old black eye, Phil. Well, anyway, 
I've been to the loft all again. I heard her talking. Yeah, downstairs on the phone she was. Some bloke called Vladimir, she said. Yeah, she kept calling him Vlad. Oh, by the way, I've just found these files up here in the loft, Phil. One of them has got Daddy's constituency work for the UKIP party. This one here has got on the side here. My work in the referendum party. Yeah. I also heard her say to Vladimir. She said, yeah, um, I've employed thousands of extra police. And she's also brought an immigration bill to safeguard our borders. I don't know, Phil. I wonder what would have happened, Phil, if we'd had an immigration bill safeguarding our borders in the early 70s when old EDR meme was around. I don't know. Oh, blimey, I think I can hear her coming. Don't worry, Home Secretary, I think we've sorted it. There's no migrants up here. The leaks all seem to be coming from your office. Blimey. Thanks again to Jerry and his apprentice, Jackie, who filmed that report. All of us at MPA TV wish Jerry a speedy recovery from his eye injury. This programme is made by the Art of Resistance, a collective of artists and film activists who seek to give a voice to the many and not just the few. They are unpaid, but this programme still needs support to cover costs. Their work provides commentary, news, satire and art that you won't see in the mainstream media. If you can, please consider making a donation to keep this programme going. Go to the Art of Resistance website if you would like to make a donation. You can also help by sharing this programme on social media. Thanks very much. Protests have continued in the UK this month, demonstrating solidarity with the Palestinian people. Of course, this has rarely been reported on the BBC. It's worth remembering that since the Conservative government was elected in May 2015, the UK has licensed over £400 million worth of arms to Israeli forces. The actual level of exports will be significantly higher as there have been 43 open licenses in this period. The arms industry is corrupt and unstable but the government subsidises it. This means we, as taxpayers, are conscripted into supporting the merchants of death that have visited so much misery on the Palestinians for decades. Unfortunately, the current ceasefire won't mean the ethnic cleansing will immediately stop. It won't mean illegal settlers will stop attacking Palestinian children. It won't mean the apartheid war will come down. That's why international solidarity with the Palestinian people is so important. Join a union, join an organisation, demand that union, implement BDS now. Let's make it happen. We are one man. We are one hand with the unified Palestine, which is rising right now. You can email us at contactmpatv at gmail.com. The programme was produced by Hasman Hashim. So from both of us, we wish you well, stay safe and solidarity. Thank you.